So I recently created this video called Building a Password Vault with Rust where we built a local password vault but using Rust. And I'd already posted the code of this project to my uh, GitHub which is Akhil Sharma 90 on GitHub, Rust Password Vault. I realized there's one thing missing in the password vault and that's a database. I created the earlier video as a very beginner friendly video and I now decided that I can add a database to this project. So what's the best way of adding a database? It's to use SQLite. So this is a perfect video if you're a beginner, have a project and you want to think of how you can add a database to a project. It could be an existing project or maybe you're building a project from scratch, a new project, you want to add a database. This is the right video for you. And what we'll do is we'll take the exact same project. So you might want to watch this video, the Rust Password Vault video. We'll take that exact same project, but we'll add SQLite database to it, right? So the code changes slightly. And I will cover the code changes. So we'll copy and paste a lot of code from the previous video to save time. And I'll cover all the changes in the code and how, uh, where, where all the database is changing. We'll cover all of that. So let's get started. First things first, we'll go to the terminal. We'll start a new project cargo new and I'll call it Rust SQLite Vault and YT for YouTube and I'll cd into it so Rust SQLite Vault YT open it up in your VS code and here the first thing that I want to change is I want to change or I want to add some new dependencies right so earlier in the previous project we had uh, dependencies like survey and survey json here we're just adding one more dependency it's called rust sqlite which helps you uh, to talk between your rust and your sqlite this is the library that helps you do that okay so this is the one that we want and i'm using using version 0.25 not sure which is the latest one but this is the one that i've been using this this library is quite light quite small anyways it doesn't do a lot of heavy lifting for you you have to you have to write the basic uh, SQL queries as well. So what I will do is I will copy and paste uh, some of the code first which is the the main function if you remember from the previous video. Now there are some things that change in the main, main function right. So the first the, the clear function is the same so I copied the clear function also that's going to be the same. Then uh, here the thing that's changing is that we will basically be connecting to the database right. So initializing database and, and connecting with it then we'll just write CLR, CLR which is to clear and then we are printing our ASCII to art which we created in the last video which I would shown you in the last video as well. Then the code for going through the queries is the same like you have adding your entries, listing your entries, searching your entries and quitting and then you will ask for the user's choice and the user's choice you are initializing with uh, a mutable called choice and it's a string which is a new string. And then you call the read line function from the standard IO standard in package which helps you to accept user inputs and you pass it on to the mutable which is choice and then you match the choice. So you go through the choice so it could be 1, it could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 4 right. You go through all the 4 choices because there are only 4 but if it's more than 4 somebody writes 5 or something else then it's going to say invalid choice which is perfect going to print a new line. So let's see how 1, 2, 3, 4 are handled. So I'll just go to 4 first because 4 is exit because the fourth uh, choice is for exit. We just break the loop there. That's it. So fourth point helps you exit. But the uh, first one uh, uh, helps you to add the entry. Now before I talk about that, I just want to talk about trim because sometimes you might add space or something uh, by mistake. So that's why we have to always use trim because you want to match one uh, exactly one. And once a user selects one, we're going to create a new service info. So this is what we covered last time also. Service info helps you create or initialize the service username and password. So whenever we are accepting uh, the user's username and password with the service, we are asking for the service like let's say AWS, GCP or whatever service the user wants to store his password for. And then we ask for the password and, uh, and the username and the password. Okay. And then this is the main thing that's changing here. We are going to have a function called write password to DB. So that's the function that we'll have to create in our uh, another file and the other file I'm going to call it as db.rs I'm going to have all the logic for my database and I'm going to call all of the functions from that file here on top. So here I'll go on top and I'll just import everything from that package or file that I'm going to create called db.rs. Going back this is the function that we'll call and we're going to pass it connection uh, which we created here if you remember connection is going to any database so this is the initialized database. 
passing the connection there and the entry dot service entry dot username and entry dot password so service username and password where you access it with entry dot because entry is where you're storing all of these details and the second option is for reading from the database and posting or pasting everything in the terminal all of the values from the database so we'll again have services and we'll call this function called read passwords from database we'll pass it the connection everything else looks very similar as in we are getting uh, uh, the new vector which i talked about in the previous video as well this is a new vector so service is going to be treated as a vector so that's why we loop we can loop over the services vector very easily each of those values will be available to us in item and then we can access service username and password with the help of item dot using the dot operator and we pass and we print the service username and password for each of the values stored in the database we're not being selective we are just posting everything from the database into the terminal the third option is for searching so we'll create a search query and this will be the prompt search by the, by the username and that will be available to us in search so we'll pass uh, search service by name the connection and search and whatever entry comes in we will basically um, search that particular entry to this function uh, by this function so earlier in the previous video what we were doing is we were reading everything from our json uh, file and then we were matching we were looping through that and matching that exact one but now the database takes care of us uh, care of, uh, care of uh, that for us so with this help with this function we'll, we will actually create that function the db.rs file and that will basically take care of everything for us and we'll print out the particular service username and password for that particular service that we have found for found, searched for if we found nothing if we found that entry we'll print all of this but if we found nothing we'll say service not found and if there was an error searching we'll just say error searching for the services and you already know about 4.4 and now the, it's all it call comes down to db.rs file and that's where we will um, first write all of this which is which are importing the packages we need the io io write and we need the R, rustql light external create which we actually talked about in or, or added to our cargo.toml uh, dependencies then we need the connection and error so we were, were working with connection so connection and error are two things we need from SQLite after uh, importing it and then we will uh, also use SERDI uh, for deserialization and serialization now the first thing that I want to do is to create the service info uh, struct so this was something we did in the last video also but now we just have an ID and the service service username and password. Uh, so they are string string and this is option uh, integer 64, which is the ID that will be created in the SQLite uh, or, uh, or SQLite database. Then we'll implement some functionality for it. So this is the function new, which we also had in the previous uh, video uh, is the same thing. But uh, the only thing that's changing here is that we are calling uh, that the new function here if you remember when we select the first option we we call the uh, new entry function <coughs> this one service info new and that's the one uh, we're doing here so the only thing that changes is that uh, we have removed all of the other functionality we just have this functionality now which is the new which will help us initialize or instantiate uh, 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 in, in basically initialize that one service info okay and then we go we're going to have the prompt function right which we are calling here uh, if you see the service username and password okay the prompt function and which helps us basically accept users input so it helps us print out and also in accept users input and store it the other function that we have is the init database function so let me copy and paste that out out here so init database is this function that we are uh, calling in uh, initially in the beginning to create the connection so this is the init database connect uh, function what it does is it creates a connection with opens a connection to passwords.db now passwords.db uh, is the file that will be created here by uh, uh, by sqlite which is uh, a very light sql database as you know so it will keep the database here itself in, in our project directory that's a nice feature of uh, sqlite and we will whatever queries we want to run inside the database we run with the help of connection.execute and this will run the exact query we want it to run so as you see here i'm writing exact uh, sql queries so create table if does not exist passwords blah 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 blah. this is going to create id service username and password so uh, as you can see here the uh, the package rasqlite isn't doing much for us it's not abstracting away the sql queries for us and giving us functions which many packages do for us many modern packages do for us this is like a very light package 
it doesn't consume a lot of memory and all it does is it gives you the ability to write those direct queries so you'll have to write all the sql yourself the second question the second uh, the other function that's really important is the write password to db function so <clears throat> when we uh, come here to the first option we after we instantiate or create a new instance of the uh, service username and password which is the service info struct we will write it to database and we are going to pass connection entry service entry username and entry password and that's what we're going to accept here in the write password db function we're going to accept connection service username and password and uh, it's going to again use connect connection dot execute function to insert into passwords which is the database uh, and is going to insert the service username and password and the values question 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 which is basically the values that we are passing it uh, which are and service or ampersand service ampersand username and ampersand password referring to the values received in the function okay the next function is is for reading the passwords from the database and that's the function that we call here when we uh, select second option we read the passwords from the database <clears throat> the way to do it is you pass connection here you're uh, sending back a vector as the result or an error and <clears throat> sorry and then you uh, use connection.prepare and select the service username password from passwords passwords in the database selecting this particular uh, you know uh, these particular values and you uh, get the entries here and then you query the map and then you uh, get all of the values basically rows all of the rows you get all of the rows and then you return that back from this function right now the next function is uh, very interesting which is the search function so this was just to read everything from the database that's why this is a very simple function you're selecting everything uh, but now uh, here in the search function you want to be very selective because you want to only want to select things that match a particular value so in our case select id service username password from passwords database where service is equal to question mark question mark being the name of the service which we are passing to this function with the help of we're passing connection and we're passing the name of the service we want to find so that's the one that you want to check for and that's what you return okay and that's it that's uh, how this program works now it's important for us to go ahead and try to run it so i'll just say cargo run and this takes a couple of seconds to run and as you can see now in the program the program is running if you do full screen you'll be able to see pass vault which the the ascii to art that i created if you make it small then you can i can show you more clearly how the program works let's say add entry and i'll say aws username is akhil and password is one and then i will add entry again i'll say gcp and username is akhil and password is again one two three and then I can list all the entries with AWS and GCP. And I can search for a particular entry, like I want to search only for GCP. So as you can see here, um, the entry, the particular entry that was selected and, and shown here. Okay, now I'll quit. And this is it. It's a very simple, basic program using SQLite database working perfectly fine. Now, if you enjoyed this project, I want to tell you that I have this playlist called 50 Rust Projects, and it's going to have really awesome Rust projects that I'm building from scratch. Uh, they're arranged in the order of difficulty. So the easier projects first and the more difficult ones towards the end. This particular project will be somewhere after this because uh, this, these are not very difficult, but they're also not very simple. So they'll be somewhere in the middle. So if you want to learn Rust, the best way is to learn the basics and then go through these projects. You will actually learn by building stuff, all right? The other thing is, if you also like Golang, then I have a huge, humongous playlist of 49 killer Golang projects, where uh, this has thousands and thousands of views. You might want to check it out. Many people have uh, been able to get jobs by just uh, building these projects along with these videos and sharing them in their portfolios. Uh, and if you want to take your learning further, there is this Discord channel that you can click on and you can join. And we discuss, uh, the more than 700 people now, and we discuss everything from Golang to Rust to system design, cloud architecture, Web3, blockchain, AI, all of those things. And we help each other out in that community. It's a great place to learn, great place to network. Uh, all of the projects, all of the code you'll find on Akhil Sharma 90, this is my GitHub. Make, uh, make sure you follow me so that you come to know whenever a new project is uploaded by me. Uh, you can also star uh, any of these projects. So this is the one that we just built, SQL Pass, Pass Vault. 
right? You can start this or fork this, that'll at least let me know that you're following along with me. And don't forget to subscribe, share, and like this video. Comment if you want to see anything. Um, if you want anything specific, do comment and let me know in the comments, all right? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.